right, thank you, my precious um, brothers and sisters. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on where you are watching me from right now. I want to say thank you to you for tuning in and also making our time to watch the video. I know that so many of us right now might be busy and I know that after now a lot are going to watch this video so I am dropping this video now because um, I know that we are always connected we are one in the spirit there is no difference between where I am and where you are because we are within, within the same location. You see, the earth system has only one location. Forget the, the, the separation between nations. The earth system has, is just, is, the earth is just one sphere. The earth is just one geographical location. Despite that there are boundaries that divide nations. And so you have what is known as continents. Africa, Asia, America, and all of that. All right? That notwithstanding, the earth, the earth is just one location. It's one geographical location, the earth. All right, the environment called Africa continent and the environment called um, Asia or Europe is still the same within the environment called Earth. So everybody in the Earth today, all right, everybody. All the people in the earth today, they are within the same geographical location called earth. Creation is multidimensional. All right. That means that you have spheres, you have spheres and dimensions. So the earth is just one sphere. It is humans that divided their boundaries to form continents, countries, cities, villages, towns. All right, all the continents and the and and countries and cities are all within one sphere called Earth. You understand that? Please just get me um, try to understand what I'm saying because I am trying to drive our mind somewhere. When we teach revelation knowledge, we teach in view to drive the mind out of the earth plane, out of the earth system, into the divine environment of your immortal spirit. Until you are able to go on a journey with your mind, you can actually travel via your mind. You can bilocate via your mind. You can translocate via your mind. All right. Before translocation and bilocation is an, ex uh, an experience that starts with the mind. Before you can take your body on a journey. Before you can bilocate with your body and translocate with your body, you must have started practicing using your mind to bilocate and translocate. It is when you... <coughs> Sorry about that. It is when you have mastered the act of moving from one sphere to another sphere, from one location to another location with your mind, that suddenly your body all right begins to 
take off with your mind whenever your mind wants to move. Now, this is what I'm saying. I said that the whole, all the continents, all the countries of the world, the cities and the villages and the towns are divided by men. All of them are within this the same sphere called it. It is men that divided the boundaries and then you have what is called Africa continent. You have Asia continent. You have America. You have Europe. You see that? But all of them are within the same sphere. So as God's son, you don't judge realities based on the findings of the human mind. If you are going to gain spiritual knowledge, you must understand that, that the way the earth is now and the way it functions It functions by the wisdom of men. Continents and countries are by the we are established by the wisdom of men. You understand that? And so to gain spiritual knowledge, you have to understand how God designed creation to function. How God structured creation to operate. For example, the natural man with his natural mind takes what is good, perverts it, and uses it for his evil purpose. Some of the chemicals that they use today to manufacture weapons they use to kill themselves were never designed or created by God to be used to kill creatures. They were created by God and they were among the things God saw in the book of Genesis and declared to be good. But today, you could see that men uh, excavate such uh, uh, liquids or you call them chemicals from the earth and then turn them into something very harmful. God did not create anything harmful. All right, but so... I was saying that we need to understand how the earth sphere is structured by man. You have countries and continents and cities and villages and all of that. And I'm saying that that was put in place by the wisdom of man, by the wisdom of men. And so when you think of continents, you think that the earth sphere is, was structured by God to be like that. No. The earth sphere is just one, one environment. So all the countries and continents are within one environment. The environment where you have Africa is the same environment, environment where you have uh, Europe, is the same environment where you have Asia, is the same environment where you have America. The difference is weather. All of them live under the sun. America, Asia, Africa, all of them are within the same sphere or environment called Earth. So everybody's living in the Earth. You see that? And then when you look at you, so I was saying that by location and translocation starts with the mind. A lot of us wants to start moving our body. He wants to start bilocating and translocating. And that is the reason why those who are teaching it as a principle that could be, that could be applied, all right, they themselves are not bilocating and they are not translocating. It has just been a message on our lips. It has been a message on their lips. The teachers of this bilocation and translocation exercise None of them bilocates and none of them translocates. It's just a message on our lips. So, now, it's, it's, it, it is by the act of divine, divine will, I move my body from my house to another place 
without having to trek, walk, or use my car. But I use my mind to buy locate. I use my mind to translocate. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to show you how it works. All right. Any environment in creation, you gain knowledge of. You can always visit that environment with your mind because your spirit is there. So we need to understand the nature of our spirit. When we understand the nature of our spirit, it helps us to see that the fact that your body, physical body, is not in a place does not mean you are absent there. You understand that? Your body could be in your house, but your spirit can spread and be everywhere where your physical body is not found. Or places where your physical body is not found at that moment. So anywhere your spirit can be found, your mind can assess that environment. With your body, you may not be able to assess that environment at that moment. But your mind can go on a journey. Now, now let me bring it down to our experience here in the earth and i'll show you what i'm saying now if you leave your house to 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 go to work because your physical senses are already used to your mind sorry your house environment your physical senses keeps for you the record of your house environment and everything within your house environment so when you leave your house to your place of work, you can, with your mind, visit your home and see everything that is in your home and where they are placed. Your mind can do that for you. But you know the challenge we have? The challenge we have is that we have not learned to see or look into our spirit essence and that is the reason why we teach identity because you have to understand your spirit nature your spirit essence your spirit image your spirit structure or your spirit conf configuration when you understand when you see into your spirit configuration or your, your spirit structure your spirit empowers your mind to visualize. It is your spirit energy that empowers our mind to visualize things. It is our spirit, is, the mind is expected to travel at the speed of, our, of, of the light of the spirit that we are. Our mind is programmed to travel, all right, at the speed of the light, light that we are. You know, we are light. Jesus said we are the light of the world. We are the light, all right? So, your spirit does not travel, doesn't go on a journey. The spirit you are does not travel. The spirit you are does not go on a journey. It is your body you put into your car and then your car takes your body on a journey. That place you are taking your body to, hmm? via your journey, your spirit is already there waiting for your body. So it is your body that moves around. The spirit you are does not move because that spirit is not absent anywhere in creation. Let me read what I'm saying from scripture. You see John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John 3 verse 8.
Look at verse 6 of John chapter 3. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. What does spirit look like? That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Now forget flesh. You are spirit. You are born of you were born of the spirit. And you are spirit. When the scriptures refers to you as being spirit, it's not talking about our physical body. It's talking about the real self that we are. So we are spirit. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. Most of us know about the biological birth. Biological birth is the journey of the physical body out of a woman's belly. That is what is called biological birth. There is spirit birth or spiritual birth. So we have two kinds of birth. The day your body was born in the earth. That day your body was born in the earth is what is referred to as biological birth experience. Now, there is another kind of birth which is not biological birth experience. This other birth is the rebirth, is the actual birth, is the birth experience that defines you. It is the birth experience that you need to know because that is what defines you. Most people celebrate their biological birth experience, but they don't celebrate this other one because they don't know this other one. So they talk so much about the day they were born, the day their body was born, which is biological birth experience, but you hardly hear them talk about the birth of their spirit. Entrance of their spirit into God. There is entrance of the body into the earth. There is entrance of our spirit into God and out of God. There is entrance of the physical body into the belly of a woman and out of the belly of a woman that you call biological birth experience. There is entrance of our spirit into God and out of God. That is what is called spirit birth or baptism into Christ. And I need you to understand what I'm saying here. Now, when, when the body moves from the man to the woman, the way it is, when it is in the man, is not the way it appears. When it goes into, when it goes into the woman and is to come out of the woman, I pray the Spirit gives us understanding of what I'm saying. Now, this is what I'm saying. The seed that forms the body is in a liquid form in the man, in the physical body of the man. That's where the seed is. So, the seed, when it's transferred from the man into the woman, is still in that same liquid form. When it is to come out of the woman after nine months, eight months, or seven months, according to earth timing, it comes out not being the way it was when it was in the man. It comes out in a well-defined body structure, the way you see my body now. And so, that is what is called biological birth experience and i'm talking about spirit birth experience so the scripture said says for we all as we are baptized into christ that baptism is likened to the journey of the seed out of the man into a woman so you could as well say when the body was baptized into the woman hmm? And then it came out of the woman being 
in this format, physical body format. So, your spirit also experienced baptism, a journey into God. Jesus said to Philip, I will take you into myself. The same way the woman takes the seed from the man into her body, into her belly, into herself. And then gives the man back a human being. Jesus said, I will take you into myself. And in myself, I will recreate you. And when I recreate you, you will cease to be a human spirit. You will become God's spirit. So when he said, I will pour out my spirit, God was already speaking about a finished product. So the journey of your spirit, the human spirit, into God is what is called baptism into Christ. This baptism into Christ is your experience, is your reality that you need to understand. So when your spirit was baptized into Christ, or when Christ took your spirit into himself, like he said to Philip, okay, let me read it. I think uh, that should be John 14, somewhere there. John chapter 14, um, let's see verse. Um, Jesus said to Philip, let me read, say, let your heart not be troubled. Philip, uh, John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. Mansions here, human's understanding of mansions are well beautified physical structures. So when Jesus borrowed that language from them to define a divine reality outside the earth, Jesus was not talking about house, physical house. So nobody is in heaven now building house for you. We have had people who, who are committed to twisting the scripture in order to make money from the people. And then you hear them say things like, when you give your tithe, angels will use it to build house for you in heaven. There's nothing like that. Angels are not building houses for people in heaven. When you give your tithe, Angels will use it to build house for you in heaven. There is nothing like that. No angel is building mansion for you in heaven. There is no such thing as building mansion in heaven. So if the reason why you are giving tithe is because you want angels to build house for you in heaven, you are wasting your time. You have been scammed. Such thing does not exist. You need to come out of religion and embrace your reality. Spirits do not live in houses. All right? Your body is your house. And your body is supposed to be translucent. It's supposed to be glowing. But because of the fall of Adam, which affected it, this one is not glowing. But you are going to be given another body, an immortal body. All right? That body is structured in such a way that what you commit your mind to achieve with that body, the body responds to it. All right, so he says here, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself. You see, Christ is your house. Christ is your garment. Christ is your glory. Christ is your heaven. Christ is your truth. It's all inside you. It's all inside you. And when I say inside you i am not talking about your physical body 
not your inside your physical body your divine essence you are more than the body who you are cannot be described with words human language who you truly are cannot be described cannot be defined with human language there, there, there is no vocabulary that can paint the. There's, we, 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 we cannot with words or human language paint accurate picture of your spirit being. You are more than the physical body. You are not physical body. So when I say when we say inside you, it's all inside you. Look inside. We are not talking about your body. If you look inside your body, you will see blood. You will see your veins. You will see bone. You will see the food you probably ate yesterday. So inside you is not inside your body. Inside you is inside your divine essence, which is not your body, because you are a spirit. So we, when we say inside, we are saying inside the spirit that you are. The spirit you are is bigger than the universe. The spirit you are is larger than the earth. The spirit you are encycles the universe. Your body is within the universe. Your body is within the earth, but your spirit encycles the universe. So you need to see yourself from the perspective of the spirit you are. For you to be able to swallow your fears, you have to swallow fear of disease, fear of COVID, fear of sickness, fear of lack. When you see yourself from the, from the point view of the spirit you are, your fears goes. It is at that point you understand that when you activate the light you are, when you activate the energy you are, when you activate your frequency, your vibration, when you put your vibration to, to work, all right? And then maintain your consciousness in that reality you are. The disease in you will dry up. It will dematerialize. The sickness in your body will give up on your body. Because your body is actually within the atmosphere of your spirit. Your body is moving, the, moving around the earth. Your body can go from one continent to another continent, from one country to another country. Your spirit is already present in all the cities and countries and continents. It is your body that can be absent in one country, absent in one continent, while it is in another continent. Your spirit is not absent anywhere. Your spirit is everywhere. And I will show you in the scripture, because it is all in the Bible. Now, Jesus said to Philip, in my father's house are many mansions. Mansions here is talking about spirits. If it were not so, spirit clothings, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So where is the place he said he was going to prepare? Where is the place? He already said that there are mansions and then went for that to say, I am going to prepare a place for you. The place is himself. Because he said, after I have prepared the place, I will come back and I will take you into the place. And the place is myself. He said, I will come back and take you into myself. Jesus was saying, I came to the earth to die. After my death, because with my death, I am going to achieve something. I am going to accomplish something. That accomplishment was mentioned in Hebrew chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. He said by his death, he will destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. After that, after that experience, he was to experience resurrection. In his resurrection body, in his resurrection spirit, in his resurrection glory, all right, he will receive men into it and men will become it. So he was saying to Philip, I am going to prepare a place. In other words, I will die and I will experience resurrection. In my resurrection personality, in my resurrection reality, in my resurrection glory, 
I will receive you into myself because myself is the is the place I am to prepare. The preparation there speaks of the manifestation of immortal glory. The preparation speaks of the manifestation of immortal glory, immortal essence. In John 17 verse 5, he said, Glorify thou me now with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world began. So when God allowed immortality to zoom into creation, the manifestation of immortality in creation, all right, is the self. Jesus was talking about is the house. So immortality is my house. Immortality is my dwelling. Immortality is my essence. Immortality is my glory. Immortality is my garment. I live. I move. I dwell within the womb of immortality. The same way a baby stays in the womb of his or her mommy before birth experience. That same way I am presently in the womb of immortality. Because Christ is my garment. He had already received me into himself. Just as he told Philip. So you need to live with that consciousness. Your body is in the earth. Moving around, going to work, going to school, doing stuff in the earth. All right, By the energy of the spirit you are. It is the spirit you are that drives your body. It is the spirit you are that moves your body. Once your spirit is separated from your body, your body will be said to have, have died. So when men say the man is dead, it simply means the body and the spirit have been separated. So I, the spirit, I am using my body now to communicate. I am not this body. I am a spirit. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. John 3, 5. He that is born of the Spirit is Spirit. So, our message is centered on you knowing that Spirit you are. All we have been teaching over the years is to drive men's minds to the point where they could visual, visualize the Spirit they are. You need to see the Spirit you are. You need to have in your heart the knowledge of the spirit you are. You need to have in your consciousness the knowledge of the spirit you are. How you are in your spirit, how you are in your spirit, your spirit structure, your spirit image. You have known your physical body structure. You call it male or female body. You know the height, the size, the weight of your physical body. Do you know the size, the weight of your spirit? The knowledge of your spirit is there in the Bible. God, by his spirit, has shown us what we are, how we are, who we are in our spirit. So John chapter 14, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. You see, people are waiting for again coming of Jesus Christ. And I said he had come. He had come. He told Philip, when I go and prepare a place, all right, I will come again. You see that? I will come again and receive you into myself. Into myself. People are teaching going to heaven. Jesus never said you will go to heaven. He said, I will receive you into myself. So, you see, the doctrine of heaven is the reason why people are not arriving at this reality. The doctrine of going to heaven. Going to heaven. Jesus didn't say, I will take you to heaven. He said, I will take you into myself. So you need to understand your present state. Your present location. You are already in him. But you say you are going to him. You see that song, that old religious song that says, we are going, we are running race to meet my Redeemer. We are running race to meet my Redeemer. They are running a race to meet their Redeemer. And their Redeemer is saying, no, you are already in me. 
and I am in you. Can't you see? You think God is somewhere. God is every... When you understand the nature of God, you stop thinking of God being outside you. You will stop thinking of Holy Spirit being outside you. You will stop thinking of Christ being outside you. You will stop thinking of you yourself being outside God. Because you are not outside God and God is not outside you. Let me show you in the scripture. John 17. Look at John 17, 21. John 17, 21. Jesus prayed and said, I pray that they all may be one. That is my immortal brother David's message. <laughs> That's the divine message on your lips. I love you so much. Oneness. The oneness here is in the order of what Christ described for us to be what oneness is. And I know that that's the message you are preaching. All right? He said that they all may be one. So Jesus started this message of oneness. It's called reconciliation message. It is a message that teaches that Christ today is the identity of everything. So he wants everything to be baptized into him. But everything is not yet baptized into him. Yes, sir. Those that have been baptized into him, they have taken on his image. Yes. So they can be defined in the identity of Christ, the living word of God. So he said that they might be one, which means they, are, they were not one. Yes, sir. But the agenda of God is to make all things one. In the one Christ. Yes. So Jesus said. That they all may be one. As thou father. Is in me. And I in you. That they also may be one. In us. <laughs> Oneness with God. Means that you are. In possession of his identity. So your identity is God's identity. By your identity you are God. By your identity you are Christ. You are not in God as a separate personality. You were baptized into Christ to take on the identity of God and then define yourself in the light of God's personality. So, I am God. I am Christ. I am ghost. I am not claiming it. It is in your Bible. So, I am teaching what is written. Denying it means you have pride. Accept what God said about you running away from it is not help will not help you it will help you you have to accept what god says that you are is there in the bible my prayer and desire okay look at verse 20 where jesus started the prayer verse 19 and for their sake i sanctified myself so the sanctification of himself is the building of the temp the house. You know, he told Philip, I will prepare a place. So the sanctification of himself is the preparation of the place. He is the place. He said, I go to prepare a place. He is the place. He himself is the place. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words. So as my brother and sisters, as we go around the world preaching the message of reconciliation, all right, the message of reconciliation, all things being reconciled back to the creator because things, certain things fell out of alignment, all right, with God, by the reason of the sin or treason that Adam committed. So those things that fell out of alignment, they are to be reconciled back to God. That's the message of reconciliation. All right? So he went further to say in verse 21, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may know 
that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. All right, so when we start manifesting the consciousness of our oneness with one another, it is at that point Jesus will be fully revealed in the world. Oneness. But you see how denomination divided us. Denomination separated us. Because denomination is a tool for division. Denomination is a platform for division. You may not believe it, but when you look at it closely, you will see that that thing they call church building, church platform, church altars, they were designed by Rome to bring division among saints. And it has divided us. No two denominations agree in one doctrine. The leaders are fighting themselves. The members are fighting themselves, protecting their leaders. Denomination is an evil forest that divides saints. And we have to come out of it. That structure must collapse. It has to collapse for us to be able to see the oneness we are in Christ. The message of oneness must become a reality in our mind. It must become a reality in our consciousness. It is who we are. It is God's vision, all right, that is already achieved. We are to wake up to that reality. In your Bible, Jesus said, I pray that they might be one in us. So, when you were baptized, baptized into Christ, that was the journey of your spirit into divinity. That was the entrance of your spirit into immortality. Because the scripture says that God alone has immortality dwelling in light, unapproachable. If you have been baptized into Christ, that is the journey of your spirit into immortality. So, by that experience, you are immortal. You are divinity walking the earth. You are immortality walking the earth. You are life moving around the earth. What is visible is your physical body. So when men see your physical body, they don't seem to understand you because what they see is physical body. And your physical body is not what is immortality. It is the spirit you are that is immortality. Thank you, Jesus. Can you kindly just come and maybe drive a thought around all that I said now and drive it home for a better clarification? All right, so where are you now? When you know where you are, I mean your spirit, it helps you to protect your body from all this scientific made diseases and sicknesses that are flying around the earth. Because the knowledge of your spirit being, the knowledge of your immortality identity, when it gets into your heart, your heart converts it. Your heart will convert it into an atmosphere that sickness and disease cannot penetrate or break through into. That is how to keep your body that is how to keep your body away from sickness and disease. I am teaching you how you can keep your body from sickness and disease. Many are, many are presently going through experiences with sicknesses and diseases here and there all over the nation, you know, around the nations of the world. And I'm saying to you that you need to discover the spirit you are. You need to see yourself as you are in your spirit. And then drive the knowledge of that spirit you in your heart. The scripture puts it this way in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20. It says, it says when you keep this knowledge in the midst of your heart, it becomes health to all your body. It becomes what vitalizes your body. The knowledge of your immortality identity. When you receive it into your heart, it vitalizes your body. 
absence of that knowledge in your heart makes your body to depreciate and decay. So God gave us the knowledge of the light of his glory for us to receive into our heart for our heart to our body to be vitalized by it. There is no food you eat that can vitalize your body. You see all these um, chemical made food we eat every day. The processed food we eat every day. All right, the you call them vitamin. Vit, there is not. There is nothing. There is no vitamin in any food you eat in the earth. No vitamin. What God designed knowledge of our immortality identity to be what vitalizes our body. <laughs> it's amazing, right? Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. I read. God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give to us the light of the knowledge of his glory. God who commanded the light to shine out shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts to give to us the light of the knowledge of his glory so the glory of god is a reality that makes things under its influence to to experience uh, uh, uh newness newness so when the knowledge of god's glory gets into your heart it vitalizes your body. Your heart is not what pumps blood in your body. Your heart is a, soft, is a spiritual software that takes knowledge from your spirit and produces its effect in your body. You see why knowledge is very important? And that's why God gives us knowledge. According to 2 Corinthians 4, 6, God who commanded delight to shine out of darkness, had shined in our hearts, to give to us the light of the knowledge of his glory. At this point, I want to invite um, my immortal girlfriend, friend, Elfrida, to further, maybe, maybe in another way, explain what I'm saying for more understanding. All right, so, and this is Immortality School of Identity. Here we talk about uh, realities of immortality, realities of uncreated I am, realities of uncreated glory. We talk about your spirit as being in the order of Melchizedek. And when you live in the consciousness of who you are outside the earth, outside the universe, because there is who you are outside the universe. And who you are outside the universe speaks about your spirit being as captured in the mind of God or in the DNA of God. Coming into that understanding, helps your body to, 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 to survive, all right, this earth atmosphere that makes everything here to wither, makes everything here to, to experience depreciation and, and eventually, all right, falls. So the light of the knowledge of the glory of God when you receive it into your heart, all right, it vitalizes your body. Those, those food we buy from, the, from, from shops and market and eat, they are chemical processed stuffs. They, 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 they contribute to what makes your body to age. So don't place your feet on those food and say they are vitamins or vitamins you drive no vitamin from anything you eat in the earth because first, before you eat, you eat them, you kill them. By cooking the food, you have killed the, food, the, 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 the life in it. So what do you eat? Are you ready? Okay, should we shortly uh, cap up what I've been saying and then um, close the um, draw the school to an end? For today um, um all right so before she comes i was trying to also to read um let's see if second corinthians chapter 
4, look at it there, verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts to give to us the light of the knowledge of his glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. God who commanded the light. You are the light. He says you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. God commanded you, the light, to shine out of darkness. He went for that to also shine in our hearts. And I said your heart is not, is not that uh, reality in your body that circulates blood in your body. That's not your heart. Your heart is a spiritual mechanism, all right, that was designed by God to keep the knowledge of the testimony of your divine essence. What science call heart, which is in the physical body, that pumps blood around the body, all right, Re you know, you know, um, receives blood and then circulates around the body. But your heart, your true heart, is the one that keeps the knowledge of the testimony of I am. When you read Proverbs chapter 4, you understand what I'm saying. In Proverbs chapter 4, all right, Jesus said, the Spirit of God said there, he said, keep my sayings in the midst of your heart. That helps you to understand that heart, according to the scripture, is not what pumps blood in the body. Heart keeps knowledge. Then, what science calls heart in the body keeps blood and circulates blood in the body. Heart in the scripture is a faculty that keeps knowledge. There's a faculty in your body that keeps blood and circulates blood around your body, right? There's a faculty in your spirit that keeps knowledge. That is your real heart. It traps knowledge and with the, with the knowledge it has trapped, it vitalizes your body. So Jesus said, he said, he said, guard your heart for out of it comes issues of life. Keep your heart, guard your heart, protect your heart. Don't allow negative information to get into your heart. Don't allow fear to get into your heart. Keep your heart. So your heart was designed to receive knowledge from your spirit. Your spirit goes into the spirit world and makes transactions with spiritual realities in all spheres and dimensions. And then your heart traps the knowledge of the transactions of your spirit and then produces the, at the prophetic atmosphere over your body for your body upkeep, for the vitalization of your body organs. You see that? That's how it works. So when we understand that, it helps us to um, keep our heart to learning the realities of our immortal spirit. Look at Ephesians again, Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 9. 